Hey guys, it's Sherry Vegas and welcome back to my channel. So in this candle making tutorial today, I'm going to be doing a complete beginner's guide to making candles using beeswax. So there are a few things that you're going to need to get started when you are making candles out of beeswax. And the first one is, and which is pretty obvious, is beeswax. Uh, so this one is sourced locally and comes from Sydney and I'll add the links below to this but for wherever you are probably the best thing to do is get it sourced locally. Uh, beeswax is great because it is sustainable candle wax um, and because I am getting this sourced locally it is very eco-friendly when it comes to candle making. It's also really slow burning wax which is another plus and has a high melt temperature. Next up, you're going to need some containers or vessels, just depending on what you're after and what size you want to use. I've also got some cotton wicks. Cotton wicks are great to use when you are working with beeswax. Um, I am going to add a little bit of fragrance into this. Beeswax has a natural fragrance of honey, because obviously it is coming from the honey bees. Uh, so it will already have a really nice aroma. You don't necessarily have to add in any fragrance to it, um, but I am, and I'm going to add in some peach, because I feel like the peach with the honey already um, that's in the beeswax is going to be a really nice fragrance, but you can leave it natural as well. A thermometer just to check your wax as you are melting it. I've got some wick stickers as well and a metal straw to make it easier to attach. And I've also got um, a specialized double boiler. So this one um, is for the purpose of just melting beeswax into it. Beeswax can just be a bit hard to clean off surfaces. So it's kind of best to just have dedicated items so that way you're not trying to clean them in between. Um, especially if you are going to be making beeswax candles uh, throughout a time period. It's just good to have your own like items so that way you don't need to clean them. You can just melt them, um, melt the dried wax back down in your next batch. When working with beeswax, especially something that is 100% natural beeswax, you want to keep the heat quite um, low and just slowly build it up. You don't want to have a sudden spike in temperature. So I wouldn't recommend using a microwave because it can scorch your wax and burn it um, because it gets it melted too fast and gets the temperature up too hot and you can't watch it as well. So the double boiler method is definitely best for this um, and just slowly um, raise that heat up until you get it to the perfect temperature when you are working with beeswax. Another thing to think about too is you need to make sure that you get the correct amount. Beeswax is not that forgiving. Um, it doesn't work the same way that a soy wax will. Even though we are pouring these into containers very similar to soy based wax, um, beeswax does, will show if you do multiple pours. So it's better to over make than to under make so that way you have more than enough because this can always be melted back down when you do your next batch of candles. Uh, but if you have to melt more and top it up, you're going to see a really clear, distinct line. Now that I've got the correct amount of wax measured out, I'm just going to put it on my double boiler and slowly increase this heat. I've gotten my beeswax to the correct temperature. So for this particular type, it's said to get up to around 85 to 90 degrees Celsius. And before I pour it, it just needs to cool down slightly. Um, I'm going to add in my um, essence. You don't have to with beeswax. It already has a honey um, sort of fragrance to it. But I am going to add some in so that way it's like peach and honey. And I've just measured that out for the amount that I am using for these two candles. And you just want to make sure you give it a good mix through. 
so that way all of the wax has combined with your essence but once again you can leave that step out if you just want to have a natural honey sort of fragrance to it and then just to stick my wicks in I am going to use some wick stickers and you just want to place those on the bottom they're basically just sticky dots you can also use a um, little hot glue and then I like to just stick it in a straw because it makes it easier and place it in the center and push down like that. I have picked two different wick sizes because I am using two different container sizes and that is really important choosing your wick. So, so all of these are cotton wicks and basically the thicker your wick the more radius it burns. So for this one I'm going to want a cotton wick that is thicker than this one because I have less radius that I need my wax and my heat to go out and burn. But choosing your wicks really does depend on the wax you're using and the size of your container. So sometimes it really does come down to trial and error. A lot of websites that do sell the candle making supplies will um, give you guidance to what you need to team up with. So if you buy this size jar, they recommend this size wick. So it's a perfect time to pour my wax now because if you look inside the container, you can kind of see it starting to solidify just really lightly on that outer edge um, and that's a great way to tell that it's at the right temperature to pour. Now when you pour your beeswax you want to make sure you do one steady stream really slowly and fill it up to the point um, you don't want to have to do multiple pours of this because it just doesn't work amazing. And you can see here that I pretty much melted down the perfect amount by doing my same technique that I use for my soy wax melts and that is just doubling up the jar size. So I did two of these and two of those um, and that generally gives you the perfect amount without having to measure out or weigh or do any sort of calculations. So I've got a little bit left over but because this is my container just for my beeswax I can leave that in there, store it somewhere um, like in a cupboard so it doesn't get dust in it and next time I go and make beeswax candles I can just remelt whatever's left down um, just because it is a little bit of a pain to clean because it is very different from your soy based waxes which are water dissoluble this is not water dissoluble so it's just good to have like your own um like pot that you use just for your beeswax so that way you don't have to clean it out in between you can just keep remaking candles and melting down what's already in there my wicks into place you can see that it does once you pour it out how fast it does start to solidify. Now because I've moved this once it already started to solidify, it's got a few little um, just cracks. So what you can do is just get um, a little heat gun um, and just sort of melt that back down again to smooth it on out. Or if you are really careful, you can just use a little bit of um, a blowtorch, a really small one or a little lighter. Just really lightly. Obviously, I don't want to burn my actual wick. I'm just smoothing out those edges. Now, you don't want to move these while they are setting. So you need to make sure that wherever you pour them, you can leave them for a good few hours um, before you come back and just trim your wicks off. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that beginner's guide to making candles using natural beeswax. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comment box below and I'll list everything that I use down in the description box. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. It really helps me out and it lets YouTube know to share this to more people that are interested in candle making. And if you're new to my channel, please do subscribe. And if you haven't done so already, 
Don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you get notified every single time I upload a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching.